Hello and welcome to this one hour capability demonstration of the enhanced kick loss detection system Transocean have jointly developed with Enhanced Drilling. Today we'll give an introduction to the solution and describe the benefits. Then the Enhanced Drilling team will take us through the full scale testing scenarios completed within the last few weeks and the results achieved. We'll describe the retrofit process and have contact details available for further questions and discussions. My name is Kenny Thompson, Manager of Innovation and Technical Marketing at Transocean based in Houston. This presentation is available to customers around the world. Your interest is highly appreciated. While I will not read the entire legal disclaimer, I do ask that you be respectful that this is new technology being shared with you and reproduction or further sharing of this presentation material is not allowed without the author's permission. I will share the contact details of myself and the enhanced drilling team during this presentation. At Transocean, we are committed to our core values, where we, where we will be innovative and continually advance our position as technical leaders. We will be trusted and focused in honouring our commitments to our customers while above all else, protecting each other, the environment and our assets, conducting our operations in an incident-free environment all the time, everywhere. When selecting a partner to develop this enhanced kick loss detection solution, Enhanced Drilling emerged as a strong choice. Through over five years of collaboration between our companies, we have been with Enhanced Drilling as their product line has evolved based on applying proven technologies to improve drilling, efficiency, drilling efficiencies, improving safety and reducing customers' well costs, principles in line with Transocean's core values. Tom Hasler, SVP Operations and Business Development will now talk us through the enhanced drilling history. Thank you, Kenny. Um, enhanced Drilling is a Norwegian headquartered service company with a strong background in technology development. We are expert in the subsea collecting, handling, pumping, measuring and controlling of drilling fluids emanating from the well. We aim to develop technologies which increase drilling efficiency and process safety while reducing environmental impact. These developments started in the 1990s with simple waste delivery technologies and have evolved in sophisticated variable speed pumping systems used today in managed pressure drilling. Next slide please, Eric. The company has four main product lines, which you can see along the bottom of this slide. Our cuttings transportation system, which collects drilling fluids from a subsea wellhead and delivers them to a discharge location on the seabed. The riseless mud return system, which also collects subsea drilling fluids and then returns them to the surface to make a closed loop during the riseless section of the well. Similar pumping technology being used in managed pressure cementing, where the annulus pressure is managed to achieve and assist in good cement jobs. And the easy drill system, currently in use on the Pontus rig in the Gulf of Mexico and on the troll field for Equinor, where the system uses a subsea pump on the riser to manipulate the level of mud and therefore to control downhole pressure. Enhanced drilling has worked with most major operators over the last 20 years and on more than a thousand wells. Thank you. So enhanced drilling has got a strong history of technology development collaboration with different partners. And those collaborations have led to many successful commercialized products. Our strategy is to continuously build our technical capability in small steps and to avoid major technology development risk. So each new development that we do is based on an existing proven technology. From our most basic mud recovery system, the RMR, to the latest controlled mud level MPD systems, which are known as EC drill, these technologies have proven to deliver very accurate volume control. So the enhanced kick detection development, which we're describing today, is a natural progression of those existing commercialized technologies. 
And the aim is to achieve very high volume control accuracy with a simple, low cost, reliable topside technology. Thanks, Eric. And with that, you can understand why Transocean are very comfortable collaborating with the enhanced drilling team for this project and others to come in the future. The Transocean fleet has evolved to comprise entirely of the highest specification floaters in the market, where we are unquestionably market leaders in the ultra deep water and harsh environment space. Even still, and on any floating rig, the accurate measurement of flow returning from the well is made difficult due to the pumping effect in the telescopic joint caused by vessel heat. This means kick and loft detection rely on human interpretation of drilling parameters which are always affected by heave and can be influenced by several other external factors related to rig motion. Upon any kick loss indication during any stage of the well, a static flow check must be performed. With today's equipment taking around 10 minutes to static flow check per occurrence, it can be difficult to achieve accurate and timely positive confirmation. Transocean enhanced kick loss detection solution eliminates the external effects of rig motion to give a highly accurate return volume flow measurement. In its simplest form, the system can be described as an inline trip tank, where a flow spool with full bore pass through diameter is placed directly below the diverted housing. Fluid returns enter the flow spool and are pumped out by a VFD driven pump skid and back to the fluid return line. The flow spool placed directly in the riser string eliminates the effects of rig motion with the exception of heave, which is dampened through a physical link to the tension ring and the EKD software. This allows volume in, volume out comparison for dynamic and continuous flow monitoring during all well stages to accurately show well stability, quickly alerting users and systems to kick loss events. With external influences eliminated, reducing false indications, tighter alarm parameters can be used, removing the need for human interpretation and reducing drillers' cognitive load, also a key step towards automating well control. Early and accurate kick detection limits influx size, reducing time to remedy and the likelihood of form formation damage. Early loss detection allows better decisions to be made to cure losses and ultimately reduce pumping materials into the formation needlessly. Loss of well control is one of Transocean's critical focus areas as a hazard with high potential consequence. The importance of timely and accurate detection of an abnormal situation cannot be underestimated. It is important to note here, the enhanced kick loss detection system we are introducing today is complementary to MPD solutions. At any time where the RCD is not installed, the enhanced kick loss detection system can be used and its benefits will be fully recognized. We are leveraging controlled mud level principles, but this is not a managed pressure technique. The riser is open and mud returns are always at atmospheric pressure. We make no adjustment to drilling parameters or control downhole conditions. It is also important to highlight we make no modification to the well control response. If a well control event is the center of a bow tie, Enhanced kick loss detection sits purely on the left-hand side with no change to the right-hand side response, other than providing more timely and accurate positive indication of a well control event. So what is accurate and timely indication of a well control event? Well, under dynamic conditions with rig heat, the flow loop identified a 1.5 gallon per minute influx when static, and while pumping at 1,580 gallons per minute, a very small three gallon per minute in influx could be positively identified. The system does not have interference from external sources leading to a maximum potential volume exposure of only 10 gallons, less than a quarter of a barrel. In addition to the significant process safety improvements, the enhanced kick loss detection solution will enable a number of further efficiency benefits. With continuous flow checking, we will spend less time confirming static well conditions before breaking the string to make a drilling connection. This speeds up every drilling connection we make. Our data analysis shows on average, our rigs spend around 80 hours per year flow checking for any reason. 
not only kick indications, but for example, prior to running non shearable tubulars across the BOP. The bit and BHA runs, casing strings going in, liner hangers coming out, and most completion strings, etc. The need for three quarters of these flow checks will be eliminated with dynamic flow checking. 60 hours saved of rig time and customer spread costs per year. A small saving, but one not to be ignored, is the invisible lost time taken to fill, empty, or switch between trip tanks. With an average of four trip tank changes per trip and around 100 trips per year, the time and cost savings again add up. The intangible savings, almost impossible to quantify, are the reduced time to remedy when a smaller influx is taken and the time and materials saved by identifying losses early. I now hand over to Eric Claudie. Eric is a project manager at Enhanced Drilling for the Enhanced Kick Loss Detection Development Project, and he will take us through the testing results. Eric worked previously as a project manager on the EC drill operations in harsh environments in the Barnet Sea, and also worked on the EC drill training programs with customers and offshore rig crews, both in Norway and the Gulf of Mexico. Eric. Thank you. I will first explain the system component of the ECODES system by going through this PNID drawing. I will later then show you some results from the qualification testing we have done in the flow loop. The system has six main components. First, the flow spool shown as item number one. It is 11 foot long, joint placed just under the flex joint. The flow spool has a diameter of 56 inch, so it can pass the rotary table. The flow spool is designed to be compatible with all riser flange designs. The flow spool is equipped with four pressure sensors and two telescopic joint measuring device shown as number five. An hydraulic riser isolation valve, which is fail safe close, is incorporated on the flow spool and controlled by the driller via the ECODE control panel. The mud return hose and the signal bundle are routed from the flow spool to the surface pump skid number two. A Coriolis flow meter, number three, is installed on the return line that ties the flow back in, into the flow line. The control panel, a touchscreen user interface, is installed in the driller cabin and the ECODE control system, shown as number four, is installed in a rear room. As you can see from the PNID, there are minimal changes to the standard setup in the rig to install the system. In this project qualification program that lasted 18 months, multiple simulations have been carried out to model and understand how the vessel movement affects the condition within the flow spool. We started with modeling the system in MATLAB and then went on to refine it with computational fluid analysis. On this animation, you can see the model and how the flow is affected by vessel motion. We needed to model the rig or drill ship movement and understand how the mud flow is impacted within the flow spool. We use a comput computational fluid dynamics analysis to understand and visualize the flow of mud inside the flow spool. A fluke was also engineered to test and qualify the system, which allowed exposing the system to the extreme design con conditions. So, what does a test? rig look like when you want to replicate offshore conditions with EVE up to more than 6.5 feet. We obvious, you obviously cannot have the entire system move up and down, but all the relevant parameters can be simulated. So on this picture on the left side, you can see the flow spool and install on the flow spool adapter tank. The flow spool adapter tank is a test feature that is modeling the riser. This tank provides a buffer volume and model the riser below the flow spool. In the middle of the picture, you can see your 16 feet high EVE sim simulator. The vertical pipe is 19 inch in diameter and is used to represent our telescopic joint in a barrel. By moving the liquid level up and down inside this pipe, it allows us to simulate up to 6.5 feet of EVE. 
To achieve this, we are using a pumping unit comprised of two pumps that are programmed to pump in and out of the heat tank into the flow spool adapter. This flow represents the flow that is created when the slip joint is being compressed and retracted. The unit is programmed to enable the test engineer to vary the heave period from 13 to 25 seconds and also the heave height up to 6.5 feet. In the test pool, on the right, you can see the surface pump skid. This is to replicate offshore setup where the pump is placed on the cellar deck at some height below the flow spool. On the bottom left, you can see the hose coming from the test pump replicating the rig uh, mud pump. The mud pump used on our test rig is a pump that can deliver up to 2,200 gallons per minute. In addition, in the middle here, you can see the small skid that is used to simulate influx, which can deliver up to 15 gallons per minute. So the testing parameters we could achieve were flow up to 1,585 gallons per minute, if condition up to 6.5 feet with period of 13 to 25 seconds, variable gain and loss rate up to 15 gallons per minute. We simulated pumping, static flow check, connection and fingerprint, loss and gain detection. We use also the flow loop to verify the cause and effect and the system upset. We'll now show you a video of the test loop. Here is the if pump unit creating the if flow. In the middle, you can see the if tank simulator and on the right, the flow spool. We are now looking on the telescopic joint simulator. We are zooming on the two stroke measurement sensor that are used to measure the if. Offshore, they will be installed on the flow spool and connected to the outer barrel of the slip joint. Here is the flow spool. Here is another view. You can see the isolation valve. Here you can see a quick stop connector and the mud rotor hose. This allows quick and easy hookup of the rotor hose. Here is a view of the pump skid. And another view. I will now move on to show you the, how the system performs using test data from the qualification testing. As part of the qualification testing, we simulated an actual kick that were undetected offshore for 48 hours and ended in a 243 barrel influx, which again resulted in 94 hours of recorded NPT. The average kick flow rate was 3.7 gallons per minute and the rig was circulating at 870 gallons per minute. The event occurred in the Gulf of Mexico and to represent slightly rough Gulf of Mexico condition, we accept the eave at plus minus three feet on the first test. In the second test, we will show you how the system will respond to the same event in much rougher condition of plus minus 6.5 6 feet of eave. This slide shows you a couple of animation and video. Let me take you through it. First, the screen you see on the left is the main screen that, is a, that the driller is using. The user interface is set up su such as the left column has the different menus to navigate through the user interface. Next to it, you can see the process picture where we display here is the uh, EVE movement measured by the EVE sensors. Here you can see the, uh, the level of fluid inside the flow spool measured by the pressure sensors. On the left, you can see the virtual level, which is the level inside the flow spool corrected for the EVE effect. You can see also the isolation valve, green open, uh, red close, as you will see uh, later. You can see the pump, uh, green running, and, and the pump speed. We are also displaying the uh, mud weight. Above, you can see the flow in, the flow out, the booster pump flow, and the cement pump flow. Oops. 
above, you can see the gain loss volume and the equity real time. In the top box here, you can, uh, we display the system status here already, uh, the gain and loss alarms, and when the fingerprints are recognized by the system. Please note that all the display are available both in matrix and in parallel units. The main trays that are important for the driller are displayed on the right of the user interface. The black line represents the um, enhanced gain loss rate or ECOD real time that the system computes. Here at the start, the trace oscillates around zero liters per minute. The yellow lines are showing the warning limit the driller set. Here we have a warning set of plus minus 2.4 gallons per minute or 9 LPM for the gain and for the loss. The red line represents the alarm set by the driller. Here, the alarm is set at 2.9 gallons per minute, per minute or 11 liters per minute. Again, for gain or loss alarms. We are logging the flow in, the turquoise uh, trace, and the flow out through the Coriolis flow meter in orange. As you can see, the user screen is quite simple and the minimum information is displayed to the driller. Simplifying the user screen to minimize driller cognitive load has been a focus when developing the system. Here on the right, you see the actual video footage of the mud inside the flow spool. And just below, you see the movement of the fluid inside the EF sensors, uh, inside the EF simulator. The camera installed on the flow loop test, but we cannot do this offshore. Here you can see the movement of the fluid inside the system. We, are, we have set up the system with three feet of EVE. You can see this on the process image and on the videos. At 3.30 p.m. and 45 seconds, we initiated a kick of 14 liters per minute or 3.7 gallons per minute. As the eco day value increase, the eco day trace, the black line, will first pass the warning threshold and alert the driller. As the gain continues to develop, the echo day value will continue to increase until it passes the red line and alarm the driller, and the alarm is triggered to alert the driller again. In this scenario, it took two minutes and eight seconds for the system to detect and alarm the driller. That represents a volume of about 30 liters or eight gallons or 0.2 barrels. Please remember that this case study represents an offshore event that went undetected and ended in a 243 barrels influx over a 48 hours time period. Now we have set up the same parameters, but the EVE has been increased to 6.5 uh, feet to represent an archer environment. You can see on the video on the right that the condition has changed which, with a lot more motion. More than 180 gallons are moving in and out of the flow spool for each eve period. At 7.09 p.m. and 8 seconds, we have initiated the kick. 7.09 p.m. and 8 seconds. Uh, let's see how it developed. We first pass the warning threshold and alert the driller. Again, once the alarm threshold is uh, passed, a new alarm will be given to the driller. On this case, the alarm comes 1 minute and 47 seconds after the kick was initiated. Again, the alarm is sown rapidly after a volume less than 30 liters or 8 gallons or 0.2 barrels. So at this point, the rig can initiate the standard well control response. Remember, this gain represents an offshore event that went undetected and ended up in a 243 barrel influx of a um, 48 hours time period. Yes. 
we let the echo destabilize and move forward a little bit. As you can see, for this much harsher condition, the maximum deviation in calculated the echo day value from the actual kick flow rate is 5 liters per minute or just over 1 gallon per minute. So this table summarizes the two case study. Again, we replicated an actual kick representing an offshore event that went undetected and ended in a 243 barrels influx over 48 hours time period. The system was able to detect both gain within a short time, around two minutes each, within a gain volume less than a quarter of a barrel. You can also see that the time to alert to alarm is quicker on case number two, but after testing more than 170 gain or loss cases in the test loop over the last five weeks, we don't see a clear pattern that the algorithm is faster to detect in a particular if condition. We observe that detection time is well below three minutes with an average of one minute and 58 seconds. Let's now look at a float check example. So to do a static flow check, we need to shut down the mud pump and then close the isolation valve. We'll go through that sequence. So we'll now uh, shut down the mud pumps. We are back at 6.5 feet of eave and again set at 3.7 gallons per minute. So it's back to case number two. So we are uh, shutting down the mud pumps. As we are ramping down the mud pumps, the system automatically detects it and starts the fingerprint algorithm. There is no action from the driller required. You can see on the display that the fingerprint signal has been triggered. The system automatically recognizes the pump ramp down and uses a baseline fingerprint to compare with the actual value. The fingerprint function for the mud pumps ramp down is an important feature of the system as change in flow condition in many cases are mask uh, relevant. I will present the automatic fingerprint functionality in the next slide, uh, but before that, let the uh, echo this uh, system stabilize. We'll now close the first pool isolation valve to complete the static flow check on the riser. So let's close the isolation valve. I just need to move the video a little bit. So we have closed the isolation valve, and now we can observe the gain on the riser. Um, we have removed the, map, map, uh, the pump flow rate and are doing a static flow check on the riser. There is no need to line up um, the trip tank. The flow spool has act as an inline trip tank, and the system algorithm removes the eave effect from the flow check. As we can see, the coded value stabilizes around 14 liters per minute, or 3.7 gallons per minute which with a maximum deviation in a calculated equity from the actual kick flow rate of 8 liters per minute to gallons per minute. We'll now look at the uh, fingerprint function. To fingerprint again loss rate, we need to first establish our baseline. We need to record the gain loss through the connection. And once we have established the baseline on the next connection, the PLC will recognize automatically the ramp down and ramp up and compare the actual value with the baseline. The difference will be plotted on the screen and the driller will be notified only if the rate deviates from the baseline above the set alarm and, and warnings. We'll now play a series five connection, but we have accelerated the videos so we don't spend too much time waiting.
So here is an example of five connections performed with a um, eave of 6.5 uh, feet of eave. If you uh, follow the uh, black line, you will see how the trays fluctuate, but stay within the plus minus eight liters per minute or two gallons per minute. No additional time is required on connection. The only condition required for the fingerprint to work is con consistency. The echo day measurement come as an additional feature to the normal PVT measurement and monitoring, for instance, of the flowback still sit with a mud logger. We'll let that connection uh, finish. So to conclude, I would like to summarize the extent, extensive follow-up tests we have performed. During five weeks with more than 200 hours of pumping, we simulated more than 125 connections and more than 170 gain or loss situations. Again, the test parameters used were close to drilling condition with up to 1,585 gallons per minute in flow. We had a benign and harsh environment up to 6.5 feet of eave. We set up variable gain and loss rate as low as 1.5 gallons per minute. So to conclude, after this extensive follow-up test, we are very confident the Anand's kick loss detection system will be able offshore to detect gain and loss within the following limit. Um, statically, 1.5 gallons per minute while pumping three gallons per minute, while tripping two gallons per minute, all this within a, with a detection vo volume or of less than a quarter of a barrel. For any questions on the material presented so far, please contact either myself or Eric our email addresses are displayed on the screen now. The Enhanced Kick Loss Detection Solution has now completed all onshore pilot testing and is available for offshore deployment early Q1 2021, having followed the DNB technology qualification process. With appropriate planning, the hardware installation will have no critical path interruption and any initial setup time will be recovered quickly with the time savings described earlier. Procedure wise, while appropriate management of change will be used to introduce the new technology to the rig, there will be no change to the well control response process. And this concludes today's enhanced kick loss detection introduction and capability demonstration, bringing improvements to operations integrity, improvements to operating efficiency and lowering well construction costs. Both Eric and I are happy to provide further information as requested. Again, our contact details are on screen and available for you now. Thank you.